Hello Clark students. This video is made by your 8th grade science teachers and it's to help you understand the concept of properties of matter. Properties of matter basically include traits that can be measured such as the object's density, its color, mass, volume, malleability, etc. In other words, properties of matter is a description of a particular substance. So why do people study properties? Um, it can help you choose the right material. So if you are looking to build something that conducts electricity, you would choose copper instead of carbon. Um, it also tells people how to store or handle things. You don't put two things that react with each other um, next to each other. If there is an accidental spill, it helps people know how to take care of it. And also for doing any kind of experiments to explore the world around us, we need to know what are some properties of these things. Properties can be two kinds. They can be physical and chemical. In this video, we're going to focus on physical properties. Physical properties are basically things you can observe without changing the identity. So you could observe the color, you could observe the shine, um, its malleability, um, all by without changing the material. Properties can also be categorized in two different ways. They're either dependent on size or they're not dependent on size. So if you have a big piece of copper, its mass and volume would change but its color will still stay that goldenish brown, its density would still stay the same, and it would be very malleable and would still conduct electricity. So those are properties that are not dependent on size. Okay, so let's get to testing. Uh, I'm gonna show you two tests. One of them is hardness. Um, so you may recall from sixth grade, you learned about hardness, the Mohs hardness scale. Um, there's a standardized scale. You could test things on scratch plates. We're going to do hardness home style, meaning you use what you've got. So here are some of the things I pulled off the ground and out of recycling. Um, so basically to test hardness, you're going to pair up materials. Like I'll take the stick and the glass. And just like you may recall doing with scratch plates, you're going to try to scratch one with the other. So I'm going to scratch the stick on the glass. I'm going to be looking for does, like any part of the stick, does it scratch the glass? Does it leave part of itself on the glass um, and make any recordings? And then I'm going to do scratch the glass on the stick. Same thing. So I'm looking for... Was I able to put a mark in the stick? But also, did I like leave any residue of, in this case, the glass on the stick? Not surprisingly, the glass is not leaving any residue on the stick. Depending upon what part of the glass you use, you might be able to scratch the stick, okay? And I'm gonna pair up all my materials and record my observations that I find. The second test that I'm gonna show you is, um, malleability and brittleness okay so this has to do with how an object responds to force in other words does it reform its shape um, when we put force on it or um, does it break sometimes it might reform its shape in a way that we don't even see it so um, everybody's got one of these or can find one of these no doubt right um, you can Experiment with much bigger or smaller rocks as well. Um, but once you find one, use a common one and use the same one over and over. So um, come up with some consistent way of putting a force on the object. So you probably couldn't see that too well. Um, that was me putting a force on my stick. And in fact, what happened interestingly is the rock broke. Um, the stick did not. Very interesting. Okay. So um, if something breaks like the rock just did, then we say it's brittle. If it somehow changes shape, so you might want to measure it before you do this, um, then we say it's malleable. If neither happens, it's neither brittle nor malleable. So you're going to want to use the same object. Wasn't that fun? Okay. 
So what would we call that? That would be brittle. Okay, you got the idea. You're going to use the same object. You probably want to find a testing object that is not going to itself be brittle like the rock that I chose. Not all rocks are brittle, okay? Um, if you got one of these at home, you can use that instead. Notice I'm out on my driveway um, where I'm not gonna be putting a dent in the furniture. Um, I'm not even gonna be putting a dent in the deck or you know some something else. So be thoughtful about where you're doing this test. Have fun with it. Take care. We're not starting yet. No. Hi guys, it's Mrs. Connor from the Discovery Team and I'm here to talk to you about the physical properties of luster and magnetism, both of which you'd be able to observe um, for different materials at home. Um, so luster is the ability for an object to reflect light. Um, a high luster is something that has, um, it reflects light and would therefore look shiny. An object with low luster does not reflect light and would therefore not be shiny. So I have a collection of some different materials that I found around the house. Um, you can probably see um, when I'm shining the light, you know, some of them reflect light more and are shinier and some are not. So here is, you know, a fabric button. The wood itself has low luster, but I have some metal things um, that have a quite high luster, even rocks. There are some rocks that have low luster, some that have high luster. The second property I want to tell you about that you can study at home is magnetism. And that's just the physical property um, that'll, that causes some things to be attracted to a magnet um, or not. So if I take my magnet and go over these materials, um, I find that some are magnetic and others are not. Even some metals, a dime, is not magnetic. Okay, so you might think all metals are magnetic, but you might find that some metals are not magnetic. Um, so those are two properties you can study at home and use to identify materials um, as we get further into the unit. Thanks, guys. Hey, it's Ms. Caius, and I'm going to teach you how to test for the properties of relative melting point, boiling point, density, and solubility in water. Let's start with just identifying objects in different states of matter. Solids are objects that maintain a particular volume and a particular shape. So this sweet potato, no matter what container I put it in, it's gonna stay this volume, this size, and this shape. Liquids, on the other hand, maintain a certain volume, so they don't shrink or expand, but they don't maintain their shape they will change their shape to fit whatever container they're placed in. Gases, on the other hand, don't maintain a shape and they don't maintain a volume. So think about the room that you're in right now. If it were to suddenly shrink around you, the volume of the gas filling that room would also shrink and it would change its shape to fit this new smaller room size. Fun fact, most gases are actually clear. Don't get tricked by solids masquerading as liquids. Some people will try to tell you that rice is a liquid because it's maintaining its particular volume while changing its shape to match the container it's in. But no, 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 no. If we were to look closely, we would see that this is just made up of many different solids. So now that we can identify whether something is a solid, a liquid, or a gas, we can actually identify its relative melting or boiling point. So the melting point is when something goes from its solid state into its liquid state. Think an ice cube melting. If you wanted to find the actual melting point of something, you would have to have it in its solid form and heat it up until it melted and find the temperature. Many objects you want to test might not melt at safe temperatures, or maybe you don't have the materials in order to do the test. So what we're going to ask you to do is say whether the melting point is higher or lower than room temperature. So if something is a solid, does it melt at a temperature higher than the room temperature it's in or lower than the room temperature it's in? Hmm. Boiling point is the point at which something goes from a liquid into a gas. For example, when you are boiling water on the stove and it begins to bubble. Same thing as testing for a melting point. It might take really high and unsafe temperatures in order to find the boiling point of many materials. So again, we're going to ask you, is the boiling point of whatever material you're looking at higher than room temperature or lower than room temperature? Solubility is a test of whether or not something dissolves in something else. 
So we're going to be testing whether or not something is soluble in water. All you need for this is some powdery substances and a glass of water. So you're going to add the substance to the water and mix it up really well. In order for something to dissolve, you need all of its molecules to spread out evenly throughout the water. So I mixed it for 30 seconds and then let it sit for about a minute just to give it a chance to settle. And when you look at it up close, there's no substance down at the bottom, you don't see any of the substance floating around in the middle, and you don't see any floating around on top. So this is soluble in water. Good rule of thumb, if you mix it up real well and it totally disappears, it's soluble in water. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So after mixing this for 30 seconds and letting it sit for a minute, I can see that turmeric is insoluble in water. There actually are pieces floating up at the top. So when you do your tests, what you're going to be looking for is, does it seem to vanish into the water? If so, it is soluble. If you can still see it, it is separate from the water. It is insoluble. Now for testing density. So if we were in school, you would be calculating the density of different materials by using the formula total mass divided by the amount of volume it takes up. But since you might not have all the tools needed to find the volume or the mass, instead we're going to be doing a float test. So you're going to be measuring the density relative to water. And the idea behind this is that more dense things will sink and less dense things will float. So if you have totally pure water, its density is 1. Anything that sinks is going to have a density greater than 1, and anything that floats is going to have a density less than 1. When you're choosing objects for this, try not to choose ones that are going to absorb a lot of water. That's going to mess up your density test. Um, also be careful about choosing objects that are really, really tiny because they actually might get caught in the surface tension of the water and you might end up thinking that something is less dense when really it should be sinking. You can also do the density float test with liquids. The key to doing this well is to make sure that you pour really, really, really slowly so that you avoid mixing the two substances. And if something floats on the surface of water, its density is less than the density of water, and if something sinks down to the bottom, then it has a density that is greater than the density of water. If you do choose to do liquids, just please check with someone first. Make sure you're not using the priceless olive oil from Italy. You can actually find a lot of really cool things online about um, people doing this with different liquids. They call them density layers. So if you do a quick Google image search from that, you can find really awesome like seven layers of liquids with different densities. All right, enjoy testing out the different properties.